It is lunchtime at Kingsmead on day three, and therefore it's discussion time. And I've got a couple of gentlemen alongside. We're going to have a discussion about a topic which is very uh, apparent at the moment with the test matches going around the world. I've got Sean Pollock and also Michael Holding with us. We're going to be chatting about the suspension of the captains and whether that's right or wrong. The recent ones, of course, are Fuff Tupasi, who missed the test match, the last test match of the Wanderers against Pakistan, and Jason Holder missing that last test match at St Lucia for the West Indies. Mikey, let me start with you. What are your thoughts initially, Mikey, about that whole thing with the uh, skippers being suspended? Well, what I'd like to find out from the ICC or whoever has put that, those playing conditions in place about the 15 overs per hour is exactly what are they trying to achieve. Are they trying to achieve just a lot of cricket in a day's play or are they trying to achieve quality cricket? Because certainly if you're going to be forcing people to be bowling 15 overs an hour, that will mean, first of all, you're going to influence team selection. And also you're going to influence what's happening on the field if the captain feels that he's behind, that he has to be rushing and then bowling bowlers that just take a few minutes to bowl and over. I think you're compromising the quality of the game if you do things, things like this. And I think they need to have a look at it. So you're saying, in essence, you think the 15 overs per hour is... It's ridiculous. It's right, too much. It's not attainable. Well, I wouldn't say it's not now. attainable. It right. is attainable, but you're going to sacrifice quality cricket to attain those 15 overs per hour. Sean? Yeah, I'd also probably change the figure from 15. I would bring it down. We don't see guys achieve that all that often. Even in the stipulations, they talk about 15 to the hour, but then they will incorporate three drinks breaks or four minutes. That's 12 minutes. Every time you pick up a wicket, you take another two minutes. So if you average eight wickets on a day, that's 16 minutes. All of a sudden, that half an hour is gone, and then we're not even going down to referrals or reviews or time wasting or incidents that happen on the field. So I think 15 is an impossible task to achieve, but I do believe there should be some stipulation that should be evaluated it should be come up with a number whether it be 14 or 13 and a half and once they've got it and once it doesn't influence the, the state of the game and how the cricket is played and the quality once you've got to that point then it must be implemented and it must be stuck to you have to have really regulations in place for me but i agree at 15 is unattainable and once we've got the the proper figure then we must force it home right we'll get some uh, some information and some and some comments from you guys about whether these guys should have been suspended because the games have finished inside three days but first of all as a mentioned before, Fuff is one of the guys who did get suspended. And let's just have a listen to what Fuff said about his suspension for that last test against Pakistan. No, I wouldn't say harsh in terms of myself. I just felt, um, you know, with two days left in a test match, um, and we bowled him out twice um, under 80 overs, like I think it was 50 and 70 overs. So I felt like there, there was a lot of time left in the game. But obviously we are responsible in making sure we get through the overs. Um, the umpires did speak to me during the duration of the test match saying, listen, you're behind, you're behind. And I said to him, I'm going to try my absolute best um, to get us through. And we were sprinting every ball with myself and Quinn and Ash in the slips. But it's difficult, you know, with a four um, seamers attack, they can't sprint back to their mark. They have to walk back and rest. Vernon needs to look the batsman in the eye a little bit and show that competitive edge. You can't expect him just to turn around. Dwan is a guy that has got a bit of a lumpy walk back when he goes back. You can't expect him to change that because he bowls a lot of short balls. So it's a combination of a lot of things. Um, but hard for me sitting here watching the boys play on the third test match not being there. OK, so there you go. There's the, uh, the comments from Faf. Sean, what do you want to add to that? Yeah, I think you've got to paint the right picture there. I mean, it wasn't that test match that Fuff was banned for. He was on a warning already, whether it comes right. from the one days or the other tests. He is getting in information from the umpires on a regular basis where they're at. I mean, it isn't a difficult thing to achieve to go at the 15, but it wasn't down to just that test match. And unfortunately, it was one of those. I suppose it's like a person who accumulates points on their license. It might be a little parking ticket that you pick up, but it means you go over the mark and you lose your license. So I do understand where he's coming from. It is more difficult. It's always been more difficult for South Africans because often we don't play spinners. We don't rely on spinners to bowl us lots of overs. So it does become difficult. I'm sure Marky back in the 80s also would have struggled with all the four West Indians. Uh, well, operating. that's point. I'm trying to make. Are you trying to influence team selection by these regulations or are you just trying to get more cricket into the game? That's what they, they need to sit down and analyze. They're affecting team selection when they're going to be forcing people to be bowling these number of overs in an hour. As Faf just said, can you tell a fast bowler who has bowled or who has run 25 yards and bowled a ball to a, to a batsman to just spin around and just hurry back to his... That is ridiculous. 
You have got to make yeah. sure that you get quality cricket. Yeah, I agree. Not because quantity also, cricket. You don't rush batsmen. So if a batsman feels that he's not ready, as you start to run and he pulls away and he gives himself time to assess himself. The other point I, I, I would like to discuss is, is on the, the point of... Um, being banned and there was still two days to go. Yeah, well, that's, it, it the, that's the issue with this whole thing. Just, to, just before you go any further, so you mentioned the second infringement inside 12 months was yeah. just inside 12 months, so it just uh, qualify for that period. But yes, continue. This is the important bit. Yeah, so I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to me that if a game finishes, what you want to achieve, you want to achieve results. So if we get results, then you shouldn't really be punished. But on the other end of the scale, then maybe if the over rate is slow and they there's team batting last on the fifth day is eight down and we could have got another 20 overs in over the test match if the over rate had been better then you don't get a warning as a captain you just get automatically banned for the next game or two games but if you finish it and the results achieve and you've got two days to spare it doesn't seem like common sense for a guy to be banned then you've got a, a prime situation here mikey and sean where both these captains in this test match are, are very slow with the over rates however <laughs> it's going to go deeper than three days so they're going to have an opportunity to get the spinners involved more and they'll be able to play catch up which obviously faf and jason holder didn't know that situation i suppose had it gone longer i guess that could have happened yeah but Again, you're influencing the game. You're influencing what captains do on the cricket field. What I would like to see well, happen. quality spinners would come into the game in, day, in the later days, I'm saying. But yes, yeah, I know yeah, what you're but saying. Yeah, you then telling people you want to be picking a spinner. You want to be making sure that you can have someone who can bowl a lot of overs later on in the game at some point. Okay. Some people don't want a, a spinner in their team. Some people don't need a spinner in their team. But you're then influencing them to think in that direction. What I would like to see, Hazy, is... What I was talking about yesterday with the bouncers to the tail enders, umpires being given more opportunities to be involved in the game. They are taking away everything from the umpires. Everything is now regulation, and umpires have hardly anything to do apart from counting balls. Umpires on the field know exactly what's happening. They can see what's happening with captains. They can see what's happening with fielders. They can know if people are purposely slowing down the game because they have an ulterior motive. They then talk to the captains. They then institute what is going on on the field. If the captains don't understand or don't hear what they're saying and don't cooperate with the umpires, the umpires then report them to the match referee. It's as simple as that. If the games are finishing in three days and three and a half days, what is the point of talking about not bowling 15 overs in, in an hour? The umpires are there every day. They know what's going on yep. every day. Yep. Give them some more power to get involved. And I must say, well, the match referees do get it on board. I mean, they try and be as lenient as they possibly can. They bring in all sorts of deductions and obviously try and do things by the letter of the law. So, so an average. It, it is average a, over the whole match. So it's not like in one innings if exactly. you slow. It, it exactly. is average over the whole match. But what about the case where people are saying to me, OK, well, these guys have only bowled like 80 overs in a day's play. The public are missing out on, on some quality cricket. They paid to get a full day Here's cricket, it. but they're not getting it. I have been to many corporate boxes during match times. I have walked along the street and people have spoken to me about cricket and cricket commentary and whatever. I have never, and I say never, had one person come up to me and say, oh, we didn't get enough overs in today's play. Never. I've never heard that. So where that has come from, I have no idea. People have said, oh, that was a boring day's game. That was a boring day's play because I didn't get a lot of runs or not many wickets. But I've never heard someone say we didn't get enough overs. You're today. not on social media, that's why. Social media has you know, been going I'm sensible. crazy. You're sensible. Okay. Yeah. Social media has been going crazy the love, the love <laughs> for these two situations and people saying, and I don't necessarily agree with it, but people have been saying the players, have been, the public's been rubbed away. Been but then from, the from social extra. media people are not here. They're not in the ground. They didn't pay. So what are they complaining about? On I, behalf of others. On I, behalf of others. Come to the ground. <laughs> I will but, agree. I think as commentators, I think we've all been there. We must admit that we've been there at some stage where we go, come on, get on with the game. What are you guys doing? Do you have to discuss that fielding change? Couldn't you have done this? Umpire should be doing that on the field. I agree. I 100% agree. I agree there are moments in the game where it seems to lag. And, and mm -hmm. Marky's point of giving the authority to the players on the field rather than banning them at the end of the game um, once things go about. The other point I want to do is it's sometimes when you watch... When you watch certain games and you see it, I remember watching the one, I think it was England versus New Zealand about five, six months ago, where they were trying to get a result and they had their support staff on the boundary. So then you got hit to the boundary, the ball was picked up <laughs> right, and thrown back right. and they're charging through the overs, right. trying to get the overs in. And we've played county games where you get a minimum of 16 at the end and they have to get over, extra overs in because they want to get the results in the game. So I think that comes to the frustration of the, the people watching is that when you want to and you, you feel like you need to get the game moving forward, you charge through and get it done. 
but then at other times it seems like you're in a bit of a go slow. So I do understand where some of them are coming from, and I do understand Mikey's point. I definitely think give more authority, get it done, because we do have times in the game where it just does seem to be taking too long to bowl next delivery. Mikey, we've got a treat for you. We've got yep. a tweet. A tweet. A treat for you, but it's a tweet. Where's the bird? It's, uh, <laughs> it's not far away. Oh, okay. Here we go. Who's this one from? Uh, Michael Vaughan. 246 overs test match. That means that amounts to 2.6 days of cricket. A team hammers the opposition and plays great test cricket. Yet the captain gets a ban for slow over rates. Jason Holder can find himself very, very unlucky on this occasion. The game doesn't help itself. I mean, the, here's the other important thing. I mean, Jason Holder was brilliant in that test match in Barbados. Fuff got man of the match in the test match in Cape Town as well. So suddenly you've got a situation where you've got these guys, such as Jason Holder, who are the stars of the series, and here he is, uh, he got a double hundred and got a fifer in this uh, test match. You've got the stars of the series that are banned for the next test match because of this crazy situation, and the test match finishing inside three days. So the public, in essence, are robbed from seeing these guys play. Well, that is what test. the public is being robbed. That, that is when the public is not being robbed. Not by five less overs than what they would like. They said that on social media too. So to oh, oh. It, yes. it balances and, out a bit. And what I would like to comment on also here is, it, is the lopsided nature of these punishments. Somebody is caught cheating, doing things with the ball or doing whatever on the field. He gets one match. You bowl a few overs less than what people would like, and you get the same punishment as a person who is cheating. How ridiculous is that? Yeah. Okay, I agree totally. There's another uh, tweet that's come in. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tweet at the time, obviously. Let's get that right on the 3rd of February. Hitting teams and captains that run penalties after every innings is more powerful than a ban or suspension. That's how I would do with slow over rates. It would affect the series and games that are being slow in much more on hashtag online. Do you agree with that, Sean? Yeah, that could be an option. You know, at the, at the end of an innings, or I suppose the problem is if it's, it's the last team bowling at the end of the at the end of the fourth innings, you can't really implement, uh, especially if they win the game by two <laughs> runs or something. You say, and actually, it's you've lost the game then. because we're going too slowly, so we're giving five. But I like the way of the thinking. It's more along a common sense approach. When a game is wrapped up, when it's all sorted out, why do you want to be banning people? But I do think then at the other end of the scale, if it could have been a result and there was too slow over eight, according to a better than 15 overs a rate, then maybe then you just step in and say, hold on, this messed up the game. This deprived of a, of a result which is what we want in test cricket. You get banned. Right, so let's just summarise this. Are you for or against this banning of the captains when the game doesn't Definite, go the definitely distance? Definitely against. And you have so many cricket committees around the world. Polly, I think you're a member of the MCC cricket committee. Used I think the ICC used to be. I, ICC now. I see. Oh, oh, so it's his fault. I'm even worse. It's his fault. <laughs> I, I'm in charge, bro. Right, you got some explaining to do now. I, I just, I'm taking these papers. I'm going straight to yeah, Marky's point These of cricket committees through. have a lot of former cricketers on them. They have a couple current cricketers. They have administrators. They have umpires. You should be able to sit down and come to some logical reason or some logical way of dealing with this thing. As I said, the umpires are on the cricket committee. Why was on the ICC cricket committee at one point? We had two great umpires on it. Come on, man, sit down and organize yourself. This is rubbish. Okay, I'm with you. Point taken. Right, I. That's it. Thank you, Mikey. <laughs> thank you very much. Anytime. Sean, thank you. Sure, Mike. Get to work. There you go. Yeah. You can start be, with that. Just be a bit quicker on your throw to Pommy. Right, Pom, back to you. <laughs>